So I'm here at the BYU game with my God Never Sin sign, and there is a giant group that is, uh, I think it's uh, a, like a uh, anti-vaccine group. So. No, 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 ex-vaccine. Ex-vaccine, okay. Ex-vaccine alumni. Uh, so they know what it's like to hold a sign now, and they're not entirely opposed to it. So. Okay, since I got you captive for about 15 seconds, in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So God was always holy. He was always God. He's the first God. He's the most high God. He's the only God. He never learned how to become a God because he always was God. The Latter-day Saints say, as man is, God once was, as God is, man may be. You can check it out at GodNeverSin.com. Done a lot of video interviews, telling the la uh, asking the Latter-day Saints, do you believe Heavenly Father was maybe a sinful mortal before he became a God? Was God maybe a sinner before he became a God? Most Latter-day Saints that we talk to about this issue say that we don't know, that we don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But 100% of Christians agree with Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. I'll say it one final time. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Infinitely more important even than your own physical health. Whether you have a relationship with the most high, holy, eternal God who was always God. Oh, I don't have a strong opinion about that. So, I do have a question. Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and then he can absolutely obliterate and wipe out any consequences of sin? Oh, my sin, yeah, but that doesn't mean I wasn't a forgiven sinner afterwards. Right, but could it be possible that God was also saved and therefore became a new creature and was fully capable of being God? Like he would sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound That Saved a Wretch Like Me? That's very specific. I mean, like, to the effect of thanking his hev our Heavenly Grandfather for... Uh, saving him well, from his sins. Okay, so yeah, well, here, what makes God special is that He never needed to receive what He has. So the holiness that He has. Okay, what's your what's your uh, position or source for that? I believe. So just to be clear, the Heavenly Father may have received the blood of another atonement. I believe it's possible. And then his sins would have been forgiven. If you don't know. Okay, that's the kind of the point. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. So just consider this. Hear me out. In, I, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 10, it says, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. Seems like it's a very direct uh, contradiction with as man is, God once was, as God is, man may be. There are a lot of contradictions in area. Do you think that's an authoritative scripture? Isaiah 43.10? Understood properly, yes. How would you understand it? I haven't studied it as well as it sounds like you have, so I can't Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I'm just presenting the fact that yeah. if God was a sinner, he, would, he could have been without blemish because of the atonement of a savior, just like we are. That's que all I'm question saying. for you, very simple. Uh, if your husband becomes sort of a, a god over his own segment of, you know, his own planets, his own spirit children, and you're his wife, will your spirit children be able to say of him that he was never a sinner? Because in Christ you become a new creature, yes. So will they be able to say of him that he was always holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come? They would be able to say that of your husband. I would think so. Now, has, has your husband ever sinned against you? Of course, of course. <laughs> Does your husband need the blood of a savior? And but how fully do you believe in the Savior? That's, that's all I'm getting at here is how fully do you believe in the Savior? That's all I'm saying. I don't pretend to be as scholastically involved in the scriptures as you seem to be, and I think that's wonderful. Not a matter of scholasticism. This is something my 11-year-old can, you know, your, 11, your, your children can understand too. Part of what makes God special is that he was always God. The, the book of Isaiah in chapter 40 says that he's never uh, been taught the path of justice. He's never learned. Uh, Romans 11 says that no one has ever given God a gift that he might be repaid. 
So to the effect of God, what he has, he's always had, he's never been given it. What he knows, he's never learned or he's never been taught. So it says in Revelation, sorry, Romans 11, who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given God a gift that he might be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be the glory. If what the Latter-day Saint tradition says, at least, if what Joseph Smith and Brigham Young said about God is true, then everything that God knows, he learned. And everything that God has, he received. If what the Latter-day Saint tradition says is true, then our God is downstream from uh, an, a, so kind of a closed off street. If that's true, if the Latter-day Saint tradition is true, then God is downstream. And he, everything he has is owing to a previous generation of the gods. He, he must thank a higher previous deity, heavenly grandfather, for what he has. So what I'm, what I'm telling Latter-day Saints to do is to direct all their joy and their repentance uh, toward God and to worship the first God. So there's no heavenly grandfather, the most high God. If you go to a family reunion of all the gods and you say, hey, where's the most high? If your God has a God, you can't say your God is the most but high. he is my God, so to me he is. Well, you, your husband might say you're the best cook in the universe. But he'd have to say for you, right? He'd, he'd, he'd have to massively qualify it. Let's say again. But I'm like a fallen mortal, so. Yeah, he's still even even so. Comparison. Well, even even given a mortal cook, uh, he might say he might say uh, you're the best mortal cook there there is in the so, entire so galaxy. The goal is to save Latter Day Saints from believing in incorrect traditions. Is that what you? They should saying? not limit God's glory to one segment of reality. They shouldn't say that God is only God over a branch of the family tree of the gods. That seems noble enough. I just... It's noble because of the biblical monotheistic impulse to worship the first most high God who was always God. And the Latter-day Saint God is the exact opposite. He's only most high, so to speak, over a segment or a part or a subset of reality. So it's not, not, not like a, we don't, Christians don't believe in a regional deity. We don't say my God's the most high for my region of the cosmos nor would we say our region of the earth, right? Neither would we say for all these planets. We don't regionalize God's supremacy or his, his uh, being the most high. Because everything we experience him is directly tied, everything we experience here rather, is directly tied back to him. So what purpose, I mean, what, what difference would that make? I don't know, for me, it comes down to, I know Jesus Christ is my savior. I have a relationship with my God. And when I am healed through the atonement of Jesus Christ, through his authority, through his priesthood authority, and I can feel the shift that happens in my mind, in my heart, in my body, in every interaction I have after receiving such healing. I know it was from God through his son, and that's... Part of being a Christian, though, is repentance, me. right? Absolutely. And one of the top things the Israelites were exiled over was their idolatry, their failure to repent over idolatry. So you're telling me I'm failing to repent over idolatry because I believe in a Latter-day Saint God. So the, the substance, or the essence of idolatry, it's even more than worshiping a wooden idol or a statue. It's the, what, what, what makes idolatry idolatry is exchanging the truth about God for a lie. It's settling for something less. And what I'm saying is by worshiping a God who's only God over a subset of reality, you're not, you're not repenting of idolatry. You're not, you're not worshiping the, the first God there ever was. You're, you're, you're essentially fulfilling uh, the definition of idolatry and blasphemy. Well, then in your mind, I guess it's just going to have to be that way. But that's not but that's how I see it. And you're not going to see how I see it. I'm not going to see how you see it. Fascinating conversation, but... We don't know that. God works through seeds, right? He does. He can change your mind even if you don't want your mind changed. Um, really no, I think there's agency involved there, but... Okay. Well, what's your name? My name is Shannon. Aaron. Aaron Shuffawala. Pleasure to meet you, brother. Uh, it's good to meet your neighbor. <laughs> no, no offense intended. No, no, so, no. thanks for being brave. Of course. Yeah.